My name is Tully Blanchard and I was a member of the Four Horsemen and with the World Wrestling Entertainment Company. In 1989 I failed a drug test, was suspended and WCW in Atlanta reneged on a three quarters of a million dollar contract for me and when my life completely fell apart at 4.03 in the morning on November 13th, 1989, I said, Jesus, take over my life. Five words that changed the direction of my life. Little did I know that the next 14 months would be unemployment. I didn't know it was so hard to get a job. I went to employment agencies and had people want my autograph and then tell me I was too educated, I needed too much money, I didn't want, I, I couldn't do this, I couldn't do that, you can't get a job and it was absolutely crazy because I had never been unemployed in my life. 14 months of going to church, going to prayer meetings, learning how to have a relationship with God on one side, praying every night, God, you tell me that you're going to provide for me and give me all my needs and this and that and how can I be a man if I can't pay my bills and how can I be a Christian if I can't pay my bills, et cetera, et cetera, and having all this go on month after month after month after month after month. In November of 1990, a year later, I get married. Find out that I'm going to be a father for the first time in my life, which petrified me because of the way I had lived my life. I was scared, I didn't know what to do, I didn't have a job, how in the world am I going to feed my wife and support, and I'd, I'd read the Bible through, and if a man couldn't take care of his family, he's worse than an infidel, and I mean just the, the things that, that went on that I didn't know and didn't understand. Three days before Christmas, I, the, the, the financial pressure was so great, uh, I had lost all the money spent all the money that I had. I'd actually borrowed $30,000 from my mom and dad. It was their last $30,000. And I paid my house payment up to even. I paid my car payment up. I think I paid my car off so that I'd at least have a car and caught all my bills up so that January 1, I was caught up and I would be ready to go. And I had it calculated that, you know, I could live till March in the house before they, they came and got me if I didn't pay any payments. And, and so on. I'm in my office and, and I'm on my knees praying and, and, I, and, I, and I finally looked up on my knees and I looked up to heaven and I said, God, I quit. I'd never quit anything in my life. I have been taught to fight, 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 no matter what. And I just looked up and I said, I quit. I cannot take it anymore. I am willing to sleep in the car with my wife and new baby when they come, if that's what we're supposed to do, I'm willing to do that. But I can't take the financial pressure anymore. Christmas comes, I didn't have any money to buy presents for my parents or my wife or my baby-to-be and certainly was not a high point in my life. The day after Christmas, my phone rang uh, at the house and somebody asked me to uh, come and give my testimony in their in their church and uh, or a men's breakfast I don't really remember uh, which and I said okay I can do that and I jotted it down and got their name and number and then my phone rang a little bit later and somebody else asked me to come speak in their church then my phone rang again and then my phone rang again and in the next five days 75 different churches had called and asked me to come speak and were going to pay me and pay my expenses. I could not believe it. And so I had to go to the store and I had to buy me a planner because this was getting to be like my wrestling days where I had a different place to be every day and I had to write them down and keep track of everything. After living through that and, and doing that, what had happened the reality of what had happened was Tully, even though I had cried out to God in a dark time, November 13th of 1989, December of 1990, 14 months later, I had really 
been put in a position where I actually depended on God instead of depending on Tully or depending on some other man or some other entity. And by depending on God, when I said I quit, it released in the heavens what God wanted, my dependency on Him. And He opened the doors and allowed me to depend on Him to guide my path to be able to go and share my testimony and to be able to help and touch people that were hurting all over the country. But it all gets down to do you want to row your boat or do you want to let God row your boat? Because it's very, very difficult, as the, the popular song says, Jesus take the wheel, but we don't want to let go of the wheel because we want to stay in control. And that's our problem because God will wait on us to let go of the wheel. He won't take it out of our hands, but when we let go, He is your heavenly Father. He is a tower in a time of hurt and pain. And he will grab the wheel and take you where he wants you to go rather than where you might want to go.